What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It feels like the weather changed overnight. There is a chill in the air now. So I feel like it's gonna be a perfect day to get some work done in the greenhouse. I wanted to bring you all along. Let's go. For those of you that might be new to the channel, let me show you what I'm talking about when I mean the greenhouse. So this greenhouse here, I call it recycled window greenhouse because it was built all from recycled windows. And here it is right here. Just looking at it, you can see Right there, that main window there is just a sliding glass door that I just turned, turned uh, horizontally, and that one as well. So what happened is in New Jersey in 2012, we had a really bad storm, Storm Sandy, and I live just, the bay is at the end of my street, so I'm real close to the water, and I'm only about 10 or 15 minutes from the ocean. So we had really bad flooding in my area. Luckily, I didn't have any issues, but uh, a lot of my neighbors and just local to me had a lot of problems, so they replaced a lot of the windows. At that time, my brother and I went through and salvaged a lot of windows with the idea to build this. You can see on the top too, we've got some windows. So this is all south facing here. And one of the fun things about this is just, is when we do things, we don't like to spend a lot of money and if we don't have to, we like to recycle and we like to reuse, not just to save money, but also to save material and things like that. So let me take you onto the inside of it and show you kind of what we're doing in the inside. And you step into the greenhouse, it's like kind of stepping down a little bit. And as you can see, there's not much going on in here right now, but that's okay. I usually don't grow that much stuff in the summer. This was designed and built mainly to get my tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and all that kind of stuff started. The fringe benefit is how beautiful the food forest looks when you hang out in here, especially in a rainstorm. It's just magical to just sit in here, relax, and just, and just watch the rain and bounce off the trees, and it's just so calming. For those of you that I've been following for a considerable amount of time since I built this, you know originally I just had bricks down here, use those as thermal mass to hold a lot of the heat in, and then overnight uh, release some of that heat. That's what a thermal mass does, so important. Something like a big black rain barrel, that's why people often have them in their greenhouses. During the day that heats up from the sun, and then it stores all that heat energy and slowly releases it. This way when it gets cool at night, that heated energy that's left there can just dissipate into the air and heat the surroundings. So that's what I was doing a lot with the bricks in the ground, but I decided to switch things up this year and I wanna grow things directly in the ground because I have this little heated coil that I think will help with it and I've got some other ideas too. And also, one of the main reasons I wanted to make this video is to get some of your ideas because now that there's a number of you following out there, I can guarantee that you guys, there's some of you that know a lot more about greenhouses than me. You know what can work and you can give me some great ideas. I wanna implement them and we can come together to make this greenhouse just better overall. There is one slight issue though, but I'm kinda of happy it happened so I can share with you guys. Uh, you'll notice here, the problem is I've got wood chips mixed with my dirt. So like I said, when I first had this here, I put, I put uh, dirt down, then I put wood chips over top I think, and then I put the bricks to have that kind of extra insulation, but some of it got all mixed together in the process. So we've got wood chips buried in the soil, which you don't want. If you, boil, if you bury wood chips, then that's actually gonna lock up some of your nitrogen and cause your soil to go possibly a little acidic and it'll cause what we call soil stomach ache. That's not what you want. What we're gonna do is uh, what Paul Gauchi does. We're gonna take that, we're gonna sift it through here to get out some of the big chunks and the wood chips and stuff, and that'll help a lot. So what I'm gonna use is I have these uh, trays that someone was disposing of locally who had a greenhouse. I've got one with kind of large holes and one with smaller holes. I'm just gonna put those together and then shake the wood chips through it. You can use like a quarter inch hardware cloth, that would be good, and you can make your own apparatus. I'm probably gonna make a bigger one in the future because I've done a little of this and I like the way it works, so I'm probably gonna be doing it in the future with the wood chips. When I plant some stuff, I'll probably just, uh, you know, if I wanna use wood chips and I want only the small ones, I'll make sure to filter the ones first. You can see there's some tree roots growing in here, but that's okay. These are probably old roots because there was a tree here before. So I'm just gonna throw in all the dirt and everything with the wood chips. And I got my buddy here with me, like always. We'll just shake that. I'll start in this front corner and then move my way back. And what that's gonna do, as you can see, is just get rid of all that big stuff. And what we're left with is just a lot better, smaller soil, not many wood chips. So this is gonna be ideal. I'm gonna move through and do a lot of this. One thing you'll notice as I'm doing this is the soil isn't super, super dry and really dusty. I came through the other day and made sure I watered it all down in here so that it wouldn't be dusty, it'd be kind of damp 
but not wet. This way it's easy to work with, but I'm not breathing in all that dust and everything. So I think that was an important thing to do before I got started. I actually had to take my flannel off. It's much warmer in the greenhouse than it is out there. No wind chill and everything. And you can see it's getting a little darker in here already. As the sun's starting to set, it's getting later in the day. One thing with that is I've got a lot of grapes growing over here and on my backside too. So those are deciduous. As winter comes and those grape leaves die off, we're gonna get more sun in here. And then as summer comes and the grape leaves grow, spring into late summer, they'll actually filter and shade in here. So in the summer when it's super hot out, it's shaded in here, which is good. And then when it's cold out in the winter, you get the sun in here, which is also good. So those deciduous trees work nice for us. Let me go through and just start so sorting all this and, uh, and then we'll get some, go pick up some black leaf mulch and get that down. Ten thousand words swung around my head, ten million more in books written beneath my bed. I rode over, read them all, and searching in the swarm, still can't find how to hold my hands. And I know you need me. Just for an update, that took me about six minutes. That was about six minutes of filming. I got this section done from here to here. Basically all the big wood chips and everything out. You can see what it looks like now. A lot better, got all those chips and everything out. There was just like a layer underneath the soil where the chips were. I wonder if I could find it here. See, it's not as bad in this section, but you can see some of them mixed in, as opposed to what we have after. Look at this, this is what we want. So that's really nice. And what we took out, you can see just thick, thick wood chips. So it's gonna be really nice. We took this much out already. I plan to have this basically full. I got myself in rows too much time Spinning mirrors framed in yellow ones I hear their call There we go, all finished. It was easy. Took about a total of a half hour, I think. You can see a lot of the stuff we sifted through over here, like I showed you before. So soft and beautiful now. One of the reasons, well, there's a few reasons we put this greenhouse in this location. One of them was the fact that we've got this shed here. So I only had to build three walls. And that shed there also kind of helps to hold some of the heat in. Another reason was because we've got the south right there. And this shed right here on the other side is a street. So this, this temporary structure is kind of hidden on that side so you can't see it from the road. And I also wanted to be in the food forest. This way, it's a piece of it. I didn't want a, a separate unit from the food forest. I kind of wanted it all to fit together. You'll notice at the bottom there, it's not like a, a permanent foundation. What I did was just lay, lay blocks and then, and then put the, uh, that wood right under, right on top of it. I forgot the name of the actual piece of wood that it's called that goes there, but and then we just followed it up and I used six by sixes on the end. So some of this wood was also uh, recycled, which is cool. Some of this plywood and stuff on the side, my neighbor gave me that to put up. And then we just put a real thick layer of polyurethane and that really helped to seal it and keep all the bugs out. Looks like I filled up about as much as I thought I was going to. <laughs> Pretty heavy, but not really heavy because it's just mostly wood chips. We'll take this out and I'm gonna uh, get this section all raked and leveled. Now that we got all the wood chips out. Ain't it like most people I know different? We love to talk on things we don't know about. The soil in here is some of the best soil in the whole property. One of the reasons is because there used to be a Bradford pear, it's right behind me, that I took down. So for years, that was just dropping all the leaves and decomposing because I never raked that up. It just would break down and break down and it's built some great soil. There we go, that is what I like to see. Look how beautiful it looks in here now. What a difference. No wood chips when we dig down either. So I'm really loving how this is coming out. What I'm gonna do is uh, come through and actually put a layer of black leaf mulch over top of this now. Then we'll get ready and do some planting. I need some ideas from you guys though. My main ideas is I'm gonna be growing some things, some winter hardy stuff like some spinaches, some kale, uh, some Swiss chard on the ground here. And then I'm gonna be growing some stuff also on, the, on some of the shelves over here. I might switch up the shelf arrangement here. Everything here is just temporary shelves. The only thing that's screwed in are these posts. 
just so I can set, sh set shelves on them. So it's, it's pretty easily changed. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. And then this back corner, I just have the sand where I was uh, working on creating a little heating mat and stuff because we don't get much light in this back left corner. We got the wood chips cleaned out of the greenhouse, all sifted and everything. Now I want to bring you along with me as I take a ride to go grab some black leaf mulch. I'm driving over now to the local recycling center. Thankful for the opportunity to be able to pick up this leaf mulch for free. I want to encourage you guys to get out there and find some local resources. Take advantage of the things you have. For instance, for me, I live in a suburban setting, so there are so many resources organic matter and stuff that people are getting rid of. Come fall, all the leaves are just lined up on the side of the road ready for me to pick them up if I want them, bagged and everything. But if you live in more of a rural setting, then you probably don't have access to these resources as easily as me, but you have more space. So everyone, every area has its advantage and disadvantage. We've got to play to those as much as we can, I think. So if you've, you live in a rural setting and you want to produce as much food as me, you might want to grow food in a larger area because you're not going to have as many resources where I'm going to have to grow more food in a small space just based on not having enough space. So I think if we focus on those things and we don't try to you know, complain about not having one thing or the other, then I think that could really help us. I'm going to be pulling up in just a minute. I'll show you guys. I wanted to bring you along for it so you could see where I get the black leaf mulch, kind of what it looks like and how beautiful it is. So right here is the mound of black leaf mulch. It's huge as you can see. We've got wood chips to our left and this stuff is the best when it's fresh. So when I come pick it up, I just pick up what I need and maybe just a little extra. Let me show you what it looks like when it's fresh. It's got that beautiful moisture content, great smell. This is just decomposed leaves. So I call it black leaf mulch. It's almost like black gold soil. And I haven't used this stuff that much in the past. I have used it some, but I've tried to focus on just using wood chips. I'll try to show you guys how to do that too, but I'm gonna be taking advantage of this more and more now as I go to produce as much food this year as I possibly can try to step things up and I want to bring you all along but I want to get you guys thinking and try to get you using your local resources taking full advantage of them I think that's enough for today we're running out of time anyways let's get that back and get it in the greenhouse as you can see you can pick up the wood chips here as well this is just uh, ground one time then they have the triple ground that's the fine ground stuff over there that's the stuff I usually like but the only thing is um, I prefer getting it from arborists because as you can see a lot of this is just sticks there are some leaves in there now, but most of it is just a lot of sticks. So I prefer wood chips that have a lot of leaves and different things. As I have this black leaf mulch in here now and I'm about to dump it, I realize this is going to be my last chance to really wet down this whole section. I want to make sure it's nice and saturated because obviously we don't get any rain in here. So I want to make sure this under layer is nice and wet. I'm going to wet it down really good, let it soak in today come back out, get the, wood chip, get the uh, black leaf mulch down, and get ready to start planting in the ground. I also have my heated coil thing here. So it's two strands, heated coil. I might run that along the edge on the outside of the brick to keep those brick nice and warm to hopefully keep the uh, frost from creeping in on the outside. That's today's video growers, thanks for watching. It seems that so much about gardening and success in the garden is about planning, about putting that work in today so you can get those future harvests. So for new gardeners, I think it's hard sometimes to be able to see that. I heard someone say though, that the price is easy to pay when the promise is clear. So I wanna encourage all you new growers to get out there, to put the work in. You will get something out of it. I said it before, but when, you, when we go out there and we plant one tomato seed, what we get back isn't one. We get so many, so many back. And this video where we're doing like the greenhouse stuff and I'm gonna bring you along for the progress of it. These are some of my favorite kinds of videos because I get to hear from your ideas and implement them in the coming videos. So it's kind of like, um, it's changing what's gonna happen. What's set for tomorrow or the next day? Uh, who knows, because your ideas are gonna shape that. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Check us out on Steam It Too. We love posting on there. James Pruzio and you talk. We see you real soon. Mm -hmm.